823, welcome back. I have a huge crush on the man sitting on the BT couch. This is Charles McPherson. Wow. Etiquette, you make me a better person. You complete me. Oh my God, Seriously. you feel so special. You give us tips so that we can feel confident in most every social situation because you have a little bit of grace, you know? But you know what's so important about confidence, if, since you're talking about that, is that confidence attracts people to you. When you're self-confident, A, you feel good about yourself, but other people who are perhaps a little bit insecure or not so confident are attracted to you because of that strength. Well, that's what's going on here because <laughs> your confidence, because you are so, well, world-renowned for knowing etiquette inside and out. The pocket butler is a must pick up, by the way, for somebody who may need a little help with brushing up on their etiquette. I want to learn about wedding etiquette today because okay. I'm sort of non-traditional and I'd like to know what the actual rules are. What do you think is the biggest wedding mistake, whether made by the bride and groom on invites or by guests attending? I think it has to come, the, the biggest thing is this whole thing about the present and the money and how much people should spend. Okay. I think that's the number one, that's the one I get the questions on the most. Tell us. And so, first and foremost, I strictly believe that you should never spend more than what you can afford. You should not put yourself in debt to buy someone a present. And I think that the person who's inviting you should understand that, that you may not have the means. So if you're going to have a wedding at the most expensive location in town, that's great, but you can't expect them to pay for their meal. You're inviting them because you want them to be there not because you want the present right and if you have a destination wedding are you still required to bring a present when you've already made the trip to Mexico because it's expensive yeah. you, so you're, you're flying and all that kind of stuff so usually the trip is the present okay. is showing up as the present is cash gauche it's not because a lot of people they want things that helps them pay for the wedding or they, they put it towards something like you know their honeymoon or whatever but then the problem is now how much do I give right and it becomes very uncomfortable and when you give cash you have to give more than usually on a present really yeah because a present you know, I could buy something maybe on sale or, or whatever that looks great that you really like that you want that maybe isn't as, as much as, as the you know, cash. So you're on a budget, you're going to a wedding, they've said cash would be best. How much is the minimum? So I think, and it comes back to, I really believe it's what you can afford. Okay. If you can only afford 40 or $50, Great. that's okay. You okay, should so not be ashamed of it. No, so don't go into debt to exactly. give a gift. That I, I firmly foremost. believe that. Okay, so now you're planning your wedding and it's only 50 people. You've got 25 friends that you must have there. Do you have to give everybody a plus one or can you invite 50 people that you want at your wedding? So you get to do what you want. Okay. So you, because you're the hostess, so you invite who you want or whom you want, I should really say. Mm. So, um, so if, you, if it's not a plus one, if it's just, if you write just Charles McPherson on the invitation, and if I reply to you, Charles plus one, I'm wrong. Right. And you are in the position that you can call me and say, Charles, I know I would love to have whoever you're going to bring with you, but unfortunately, uh, you know, I need to keep it to the numbers that I'm at, and so I'm gonna respectfully ask that you just come on your own. Okay, now we're at the wedding, and I cry at weddings. I cry at weddings even if I don't really know the people. Okay. I'm just, it. I don't, is that inappropriate? No, do, I think do I need I, to leave? <laughs> no, I think be prepared with, yeah. with, with you know, a tissue with you, right. first of all. But I think that's so great, that's, that's emotional because it means something to you that, that, that people are making this commitment. So I think that's great. Okay, now clinking glasses. Technically, you're not supposed to anymore. Okay. So, do you know why you used to clink glasses? No. So it used to be before because then if you clink them, the liquid would, would mix in them and so that way I knew you weren't going to poison me because we were mixing the, the, what's in our drinks together. Wow. But now it's technically not done. But if you are going to, to clink glasses, you don't do the top because that's where they chip. You do them on the side. Good to know. So, and all the people that do the, when you're clinking glasses, oh, in the eyes. In, in the, the eyes, eyes, number one, but number two, technically it's considered bad luck for some who are superstitious mm -hmm. that if you clink with one person at the table, everybody, everybody now has to do yes. it. Gotcha. So it's better just to lift your glass to the person and, and a nod. then they, without touching. Got it. Okay, so now we're at a wedding with an open bar. Yep. Does that mean we all of a sudden order 50 <laughs> shooters? You know what, it's not, I think, it's about not making a fool of yourself. Right. So, you know, having some shooters is great, but don't get so drunk that you that you make a fool of yourself. Sloppy. And sloppy, because that just is embarrassing for yourself. And then people will think of you that way. And if you're having a wedding that doesn't have an open bar, is that something you need to put in your invitation or is that something that people can recognize when they arrive? 
You know, that's a really great question, and I think that people, I would not necessarily write on the invitation that it, that it's not an open bar, but I would whisper to people just, you know, I'm really glad that you're coming, just let you know that, you know, it's not going to be an open bar, just so you're kind of aware of it, but I don't think I would write that on the invitation. Okay, good to know. Charles McPherson, our etiquette specialist who we could sit and chat about. I've got a bazillion questions <laughs> for this man, but I know I can go to your website. Anytime. CharlesMcPherson.com. Check it out. We'll have you back here a million times, I hope. My oh, my God, Thank a you. great handshake. And he was talking about my <laughs> shoes earlier, so I loved him even more then. Okay, 828. We are going to take a quick break.